Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars video. Before I get into things, I just want to announce that I will be streaming, due to popular demand, some Battlefleet Gothic Armada 2 over on my second channel, X2. I'll probably start about half an hour to an hour after this goes live. I'll schedule the stream so you can basically know when to start watching, if you're interested anyway. Links to that down in the description and in a pinned comment. So one question I've gotten asked time and time again is, what if the Empire wasn't evil? And that can take the form of what if Palpatine wasn't evil, or what if Palpatine was removed and somebody instead moved into his place? And really there's no great answer for that, because the Empire inherently is evil the way that it was in the Star Wars original trilogy and in Legends and canon afterwards. I mean, even just the act of creating and using these gigantic super weapons makes, in my opinion, the Empire completely beyond saving. And we actually get a discussion of that when the New Republic is trying to decide whether to use the Sun Crusher, an immensely powerful super weapon that they stole from the Empire. Basically, they could have used it to destroy every remaining Imperial holdout in probably mere days. However, Mon Mothma ultimately decides that the use of such power would basically invalidate the government, which I think is true. So when looking at what a good empire would look like, I think you have to look at the key tenets of the empire that aren't so overtly evil. And I think there's actually a really easy way to do that. You look at the men that served within the empire, and specifically I think the best non-evil at least in his core, true Imperial is Galad Pelion, the right-hand man of Grand Admiral Thrawn and the leader of the Imperial Remnant after Natasi Dalla. And Pelion's actually a great choice for this because not only does he represent these good aspects of the Empire, but he also led the Empire for some years. So we can look at not only the changes he made, but also which values were important to him. And basically, after the Yuuzhan Vong War, the Empire really, really fundamentally changed. It's still not somewhere that I would have wanted to live, however, it became less of a tyrannical government and more a government heavily, heavily focusing on order and security. From a policy perspective, you can almost imagine the New Republic transforming into the Empire after maybe a few decades of elections, where certain politicians take the government further and further in that direction. The New Empire under Pelion outlawed slavery, women and aliens were more prominent in the government itself, however of course there did still exist widespread xenophobia, and that was because much of the old guard retained positions of power. And this is the one thing that I think a good empire would have to struggle against. Sure, you might not be as overly evil, maybe you're not capturing Wookiees and forcing them to build your super weapons, but if the Empire at one point was like that, it will be filled to the brim with people expecting and wanting that type of behavior. If you're starting from anew, I still think there's a possibility that the very stringent law and order aspect of the Empire draws those people in nonetheless. And it's interesting because even commanders like Pelion within the Empire who believed in these good purposes and honestly thought they were doing what was best for the galaxy, still largely sat around and watched as the Empire destroyed planets and, you know, subjugated populations. So I think that's something to keep in mind and I think it speaks to the sort of inherent difficulty of basing your government off of strength and obedience. Regardless, it's very, very clear to me that Pelion's empire or any good empire still abiding by its philosophies would have a strong military. One of the main things that Pelion was concerned about in relation to the New Republic was the other faction's militarization and its readiness to respond to threats. When the Yuuzhan Vong invaded, Palpatine was scared that the New Republic would basically crumble. And had Pelion instead been leading their forces, as he would sort of do later within the GA, they could have most likely stomped out the Vong as they tried to enter the galaxy. And even the Yuuzhan Vong realized that the Empire was much more aggressive and proactive when it came to threats. And I think that's an element that would be maintained even within this good Empire. So basically we have a large fleet, 
we don't have as much overt evilness, so probably no Death Stars, but I think it's possible that something like the Tarkin Doctrine continues to drive ship design, fleet composition, etc. Because even if they're not blowing up planets, basically the central power and the central military is going to want to seem unassailable. Member systems or those outside of the Empire should be scared of the faction's military. So we'd probably still see ships like Star Destroyers, we'd probably still see TIE Fighters and Stormtroopers in massive numbers, but some of the very, very large vessels like Super Star Destroyers, which sort of acted as the jumping off point to massive super weapons, may have been scaled down, leading to perhaps a more practical fleet. I think it also goes without saying that a less overtly evil empire would probably make rebellion less inflamed. Sure, rebels would still exist. And I don't think the Empire would allow planets to just leave. So there's pretty much going to always be some factions that aren't happy. I just do think it's more manageable without planet killing super weapons and your faction being led by an evil space wizard. Now, speaking of space wizards, I do think the Jedi play an interesting role in this new dynamic. We know that Pelion himself respected the Jedi, and I've got an interesting quote here that you guys might enjoy. We are the Empire. We bring order and justice for the common good. That's a very Jedi-esque statement, so I think if possible, a good Empire would want the order to still exist and still be effective because they do bring stability to the galaxy. And if you look at Natasi Dalla, when she was ruling the Galactic Alliance. She appreciated somewhat the role that the Jedi had, but there was sort of an uncomfortable relationship between the Jedi Order and the government. The Jedi were seen as being outside of legal rules. They kind of just did what they wanted, they sometimes went outside of the wishes of the GA, and I think that's a struggle that would exist in this environment as well. So it's difficult, because the Jedi probably would not want to serve under such a strict government, but you look at Pelion, for example, and he was a friend of Luke Skywalker, and a big supporter of Luke when he was in the GA. And that's all I've got to say about Pelion, but I will finish with one final quote from Legacy of the Force Revelation about Pelion and his ideas of an empire by the time he's an old man. If you wanted to build an empire, well, the trick was to leave the population to get on with their lives. Pelion got up and walked across the cabinet that housed hundreds of data pads, antique bound flimsy, and even ancient animal skin scrolls, military histories from a thousand worlds spanning millennia. He knew if he picked one at random, any history at all, he would find much of the same story of the one that he was living through today, seizure of power, the desire for expansion, and the inevitable inability to hold all that had been grabbed. The only variable was how long it took to fall apart. The longest lived empires were those with the lightest hand on the reins. Empire can be different, he muttered aloud, provided we shoot all the lunatics who enjoy the idea. Pelion simply wanted to leave the galaxy tidy and clean when he left it for the last time. That was what government was about, and the military was its instrument to achieve it. So Pelion by the end of his life clearly still had very imperial views, but I would argue somewhat was disillusioned by the idea of an empire, because there is sort of some difficulty rationalizing a pretty violent autocracy to maintain free will and personal liberty. Other than that, I think Thrawn himself provides a good look at what an empire under a good ruler would look like, especially Thrawn as he appeared later on in the Star Wars Expanded Universe. For example, he did not see his crew as expendable, but if one of them made a mistake that was deemed unacceptable, he would kill them. But he would do so while also maintaining the general respect of his crew, unlike someone like Vader. We can see more of Thrawn's style in the formation of the Empire of the Hand, which was sort of an imperial offshoot, still focused on law and order, but not openly xenophobic or anything like that. Again, the emphasis here is law, order, and security against outside threats. Finally, for an empire to maintain its spirit, it has to be autocratic, i.e. all the power has to be within one person. I think there are multiple ways that this can be achieved. There probably would not be an emperor forever, as was the case with Palpatine. Instead, we might have a royal family, which was the case with the Fell Empire, a sort of rule by power, which was frequently the case with the smaller imperial factions after the Battle of Endor, or perhaps some sort of meritocracy or democracy. And I know what some of you are thinking, how is it possible for the empire that we know from Star Wars to be a democracy? 
Well, the Empire, in fact, in Fate of the Jedi was dealing with that very same idea, and in the end, they do have a democratic election to figure out who will be the next Emperor. So that's my thought on the issue. A good Empire would still be autocratic, it would still be focused on order and security, and I don't think it would still be a very nice place to live. Is that good, really? I don't know, but it's not overtly evil like the Galactic Empire that we get in Star Wars Legends and Canon. If you want to see how this good empire that Pelion started turned out in the end, well, go to the Legacy of the Force comics and we can see that the Fell Empire eventually ended up making its own cast of Jedi and it worked with the Sith, so maybe not the best ending, although they do sort of redeem themselves afterward. But that's all I got for you guys. Just a reminder, I will be playing some Gothic Armada tonight if you're interested in checking that out. It's a Warhammer 40,000 game and I'm told it's pretty cool. I've never played it before, but it should be fun. Until then though, guys, have a great one. This has been your host, Eckhart's Ladder. Until next time, be safe, wash your hands, stay indoors, watch videos, and may the Force be with you.